Hey everybody, we're moving into a part of, uh, of science where we're going to be focusing on relationships between different variables. Um, and so one thing that we'll frequently do here is use graphs to try and determine what those relationships are. So uh, I know you've seen some of this stuff in your math classes before, but I wanted to make sure we're all on the same page and maybe some people need a little refresher. It's been a while since I've seen it or you know, are, are just learning about it now. So here's a little way to reinforce that. Uh, right now, there are three different graph types we're going to be um, seeing quite a bit. I'll go ahead and do four because we'll see a fourth one before too long. So let's say that we see a graph that looks something like this with a straight line in there. Um, that straight line indicates that this is a linear graph or a linear relationship. Sometimes people also say this is a direct relationship or directly proportional. This one is also a positive relationship, which means that as one variable goes up, the other variable goes up too. So if we look at x getting higher, x gets higher when we go in this direction. And when we go that direction on the graph, we also end up moving up on the graph. So y ends up going upward. So x goes up, y goes up as well. That tells us that it is a positive relationship. Now we could also have a linear graph that shows a negative relationship, and that'd be something like this, where when x gets larger, y gets smaller. So this is a negative correlation or a negative relationship. Um, correlation here. Um, still linear, um, still um, proportional, but with a negative correlation now. Okay, another one that we'll see is going to be some kind of a curve. And there are a whole bunch of different types of curves, but we're just going to have one that we have to worry about for right now. And that's a curve that will be um, kind of curving upward so it gets steeper and steeper over time. And it might um, have a different starting point. So we might see, do a different color here, we might see something that, say, starts a little bit lower. Maybe it goes up a little bit steeper. We could have it start you know, somewhere in the middle, but be a more gradual curve. Um, so any of those curves upward right now uh, are going to be just a single type of relationship. Like I said, telling which type of curve it is gets a little tricky. Um, but for now, we're only going to deal with one type of curve, so let's just focus on that. This is going to show a, uh, uh, this, this shape is going to be a parabola. That's the shape. And this is going to show a quadratic relationship. And again, this one being a positive quadratic relationship. Positive, just meaning that when x gets larger, y gets larger as well. Um, we could have a negative quadratic relationship. We won't see any of those right now, but might as well include that. That'd be a curve like this, or maybe a steeper one, or a little flatter one, but still a curve downward. That could be a negative quadratic, or some one of those other um, curvy type relationships, um, but that'd be a negative correlation between those. Um, another one that we're going to see right away is something where we have a straight line, a horizontal, not just straight, a horizontal line. I'm just going to put that in here. Horizontal, since my drawing isn't perfect here. Um, horizontal line. Um, and so the indication on this is that when x changes, y does not. And so no matter what happens to the x value, the y value is unaffected. So we would call this no relationship. There we go, no relationship. So as an example, maybe over on the left side here, we have my age. Um, and on the y-axis, we have the number of people wearing red shirts in class. So if I asked you the question, how does my age change based on the number of people wearing red shirts in class, 
Obviously, the answer is my age doesn't change. It's you know, it's 32. No matter how many people are wearing red shirts, I don't look at it, look out in the class and count how many red shirts there are before I tell somebody my age. So there is no relationship there. It doesn't matter how many people are wearing red shirts. My age is fixed by other variables, by by how long I've been alive. So no relationship between those um, those two variables. Um, the last one that uh, that we'll see sometimes is one that looks like this. We have a line that starts out pretty steep with a downward slope and it ends up um, basically horizontal and this one is going to be an inverse relationship. Again, there are a few varieties of inverse relationships um, and it can be tough to tell which one we're dealing with, but uh, for us, we'll, we'll stop at that level. This, this is an inverse relationship. Now, if we want to think equations for each of these, going back up to the top here, the equation for a linear uh, relationship in general is going to be y equals mx plus b. So we have some coefficient on the x, and then we have some constant that we're adding to that. Um, we don't have any squares or square roots or anything in this one. It's just uh, uh, the x is to the first power. You could even write that little 1 in there to the first power. Don't need it, though, so I'll take that out. Um, and then for the, the positive correlation, m is a positive value. And then for a negative linear relationship, we still have y equals mx plus b, but m is now a negative number. Down here for the parabola, the general form on this is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And if that's a positive relationship, we have a positive value for the a here, for the coefficient on the x squared. Um, again, we don't get too far into the math here, but being able to recognize what kind of an equation this looks like or what the form of the equation would be um, will be useful for us. And then down here where we have a negative uh, uh, correlation with a quadratic relationship, it's still ax squared plus bx plus c as the general form. This is now just a negative a. And then down at the bottom, Oh, sorry, this one, uh, this would be y equals, and we'll just put that as a. So there's no x whatsoever here. This is just a constant value. And then a is constant. Uh, here, a equals a constant not determined by x. And then last piece here, inverse relationship. The general form on this would be y equals uh, let's see, a over x plus c, I think is the, the usual format for this. Anyway, we have a constant up here and a constant out here. Um, what's different about this is we have x in the denominator of a fraction. So as x gets to really, really, really big values, like say a million, maybe a is like the number of three. As x gets to really, really big numbers, we have 3 over a million. That's a really small number then. So we do have um, a negative correlation there um, where as x gets bigger, y gets smaller, um, even though there's no uh, need for negative numbers um, uh, in, the, in the constants for that. So negative correlation on that one as well, um, but in a different way than the negative quadratic. And uh, you know, a lot of these um, these shapes are are tough to tell just by looking at a rough sketch. You'd need more more data and um, to to try and fit a fit a graph to them using maybe some software for that. So, just general overview on the graph shapes and how we're going to use them, especially when we're trying to determine relationships between two quantities. Maybe when we're writing a CER or um, just trying to understand generally what what can we interpret from a particular data set. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you found this useful, by all means, like and share so other people can find it too. Bye-bye.